Hallelujah. Hey, family. Hey, family. What's going on? Come on in. Come on in. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Come on, come on in, come on in. Hello, everybody. Hallelujah. What's going on, family? Come on in, come on in. Hey, how's everybody doing this evening? So good to see y'all. So wonderful to see you guys. How's everybody doing? I hope everyone is having a magnificent day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give everybody a moment to join before we get started this evening with this wonderful word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I hope everyone is having an awesome day. I hope you're walking in complete and total deliverance. I hope you're walking in the freedom that Jesus gave you. It is yours. It belongs to you. So just a reminder, please make sure you push share. Uh, make sure you go, uh, when you go into Facebook, when you push share, you want to uh, select public and you want it to get out to everybody. Hallelujah. So please make sure that you are doing that. What's going on, everybody? Hey, what's up? How's everybody doing? I'm looking kind of, I got my studious look on today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to get started in a few moments. Just give everybody time to join us. We're going to get it all started. Uh, God has a word for us. Whenever God calls his people together, he definitely has a word for them. God never calls his people together and just to be calling together. He calls us together because it's something he wants to say. It's, it's some information he wants to get to us. It's some revelation he wants to get to us. So just come expecting. Just come expecting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have a few announcements. We're going to give everybody again a few moments to join. I'm going to wait another, about another two or three minutes, and then we're going to get started. Again, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day today. Uh, please make sure that you share. Um, if you want to send this directly to somebody, hit the at, uh, the at sign and then type their name and it goes straight to that person. But please make sure you share this. Help, help us evangelize. Help us get the word of God out to people who need to hear it. You never know. You know, so this word that God has given us for this evening uh, could bring forth deliverance in somebody's life. So it's very important that we use uh, this social media platform and other social media platforms as a means of evangelizing. You may not want to go to Africa or may not even have the means to go to Africa, but you can go to Africa via a social media platform by pressing share and you can go straight to Africa. Hallelujah. Without even leaving your home, you can go right to um, Guana. Without even leaving your home, you can go to Egypt without even leaving your home. You can go to Spain without even leaving your home by simply pressing share. Uh, we're gonna wait just two more minutes. I'm not gonna uh, prolong this. I'm gonna give you guys this word that God gave me. I'm gonna share it with you. And then I'm going to say a holla. <laughs> but I do have some announcements. And I will repeat these announcements prior to going into this, uh, this Bible study. Um, just a reminder, the baptism, uh, baptism is Saturday, August 10th at 10 a.m. at Pilgrim Journey, Journey Baptist Church at 720 Bethlehem Road in Rifle, Virginia. Zip code is 23228. Again, uh, we are having our baptism. That's Saturday, August 10th at 10 a.m at Pilgrim Journey, Journey Baptist Church, 720 um, Bethlehem Road in Rico, Virginia, 23228. Um, so please, uh, those of you who want to get baptized, 
uh, please go ahead and register so you can go ahead and get dipped in the water. Hallelujah. Also, just another reminder, um, our deliverance service. Everybody say deliverance service. Woo! We have deliverance service every fourth Sunday of every month. Uh, we have our deliverance service, so please invite your family, and friends, anybody that you know that may be uh, oppressed, depressed, sick, or some type of infirmity, harassed by some type of demonic force, bring them to the deliverance service um, and, and uh, let, let them receive the deliverance that Jesus paid the price for them to have. We are supposed to be free. Jesus paid a horrific price for us to be free. So it is, it's our right. We have a blood covenant right to live a free life. It is not something you have to persuade God. You don't have to convince God. You don't have to talk him into it. Jesus signed it in his blood and it is rightfully ours by the blood of Jesus. We have a covenant right to be free from any and every satanic and demonic oppression. I'm about to start already. Ah, man, Lord have mercy. So I'm telling you, it's, it's, our, it's our blood covenant right. It's our blood covenant right. So let's have a, a, let's have prayer before we go into tonight's Bible study. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We would like to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Holy Spirit. Thank you for the angels. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome the angels. We welcome you to minister to the people of God. Now, Holy Spirit, none of me and all of you. I decrease, Holy Spirit, so you increase. Holy Spirit, you do the teaching. You do the speaking. I avail my voice to you. Whatever you want to say, Holy Ghost. Mande, Roko, San, Dadaba, Sete. Whatever you want to say, Holy Spirit, to God's people, say it. I welcome revelation. I welcome wisdom. I welcome insight. I welcome the angels of wisdom. I welcome the angels of re revelation. Come forth right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight's Bible, tonight's title for tonight's Bible study is Deliverance is Spoken. This, if you want to uh, make it into an acronym. Deliverance is Spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I will be coming from, if you want to go ahead and pull this up, 2 Kings chapter 7. Verse 1 through 20. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, um, but that is where the the uh, the meat of today's Bible study is going to be coming from. Again, that's 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 through 20. I'm going to start off like this, with this. All right. Most believers think or have the impression that deliverance only comes in one format, uh, which is the laying of hands and casting out demons or casting out demons via the laying of hands. That is one aspect that deliverance will come forth, but that's not the totality of, or I would like to use for um, words sake, that's not the only method that God uses to minister deliverance to his people. Uh, however, we have to be very careful in thinking or putting God, for my lack of a better word, in a box. Uh, we can, it is very possible for us to limit God. And the way we can limit God is having the mindset that deliverance can only come through one mode, through one method, which is casting out demons via laying of hands. That is one aspect. That is one method that God uses to minister deliverance uh, to his people. Um, however, another method that God will utilize to minister deliverance to his people is via a prophetic word 
or when the word of God is being preached or taught with supernatural revelation, wisdom, and insight. And I'm going to refer back to a, uh, a phrase that pa Apostle used uh, this past Sunday. And before I get started, I'd like to apologize. Apostle, thank you, you and uh, Katrina, for this opportunity to share the word of God with um, God's people. I want to say thank you so much. This is as this is an honor and a privilege, and I do apologize for not saying that before I got started, but I was ready to take off, so I have to <laughs> catch myself. Uh, but as I was saying, is that another method that God uses to minister deliverance to His people is via a prophetic word, or when the word of God is being preached or taught with supernatural revelation, wisdom, and insight. And I like to refer to a statement that apostle had made this past Sunday as he was ministering and revelation was coming forth and wisdom was coming forth. He had made a statement that you can receive your deliverance right now. You don't have to wait for me to lay hands on you. You don't have to wait. You can receive your, your deliverance right now just by, just by the preaching or the speaking of the word of God. And that's what God wants to relate to us. He don't want us to get caught up or get fixated on deliverance coming in one method. Usually when that happens, it is a, it is a borderline um, way of going into religion. And we don't do religion here at Fit for the Kingdom. So we want to, we want to let, uh, allow God to have his way to minister deliverance in any method or any way that he chooses to. We cannot dictate to God how he's going to minister deliverance. You know, again, it's giving him, it's not putting him in a box. It's not saying, okay, God, you only can, we only expecting you to minister deliverance by the casting out of demons and the laying of hands. But what about when the word of God is being preached? There's a word, when, when the word of God is being pre preached, whenever the word of God goes forth, deliverance is available. The word of deliverance accompanies the word of God. It is virtually impossible for the word of God to be preached where revelation, wisdom, and insight and deliverance not be present. That's how powerful the word of God is. So we want to make sure that we are not boxing God in. We are not saying with our attitude or we're not saying with our, you know, say just with our, with, with, with the lack of participation that God, the only way you can do deliverance is by the casting out of demons and the laying of our hands. Last, this past Sunday, that word was so powerful that deliverance was in the house before apostle began to even lay hands on anybody. That's how powerful the word of God is. So I want to give you guys these points before I go into um, uh, the book that we're going to be launching from. So when delivery is spoken, it does four things. So when deliverance is spoken, it does four things. What do I mean by when deliverance is spoken? Well, when the word of God goes forth, when the word of God goes forth, deliverance is being spoken. So when God's word is being spoken, when God's word is being preached, when God's word is being ministered, deliverance is going, even right now, deliverance is available because the word of God is coming forth. So, but there's four things that the, when, when deliverance is spoken, it's four things that it does. One thing it does. Number one, it ignites faith, which then produces courage, boldness, and I won't be denied attitude. Number one, it ignites faith. It produces courage, boldness, and I won't be denied attitude. When the word of God is being preached, it produces something in you like 
I refuse to be bound by anything any longer. That is a I won't be denied my freedom attitude. So when the word of God is preached, deliverance is coming forth and it's igniting our faith. It is producing courage and boldness and the courage and the boldness that is saying is that, hey, devil, this, enough is enough of this foolishness. I'm not going to live like this any longer. I've had enough. I do not have to accept this. Number two, it causes us to walk in sweatless with very little effort victories. We're going to get into these points as we dive into the word, but I want to give you guys these points first. Number two, it causes us to walk in sweatless with very little effort victories. Number three, it produces the giving nature of God. And you want to tell everyone and share the good news with others. That's number three. That's the third thing. When deliverance is being spoken, it produces the giving nature of God. You want to share that with somebody. You want to tell somebody else, hey, you don't have to be bound any longer. You don't have to accept that. It produces that in you. And it, wants, and it also causes you to want to share the good news with others. The fourth thing it does, it, produce, uh, it produces deliverance to your household, your community, city, state, and nation. So let's, 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 let's just jump into this. Let's go ahead and jump to this. Step number, uh, first thing. It ignites faith, which then produces courage, boldness, and I won't be denied attitude. Again, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. And let me start with, with, with um, verse number 1. Let me start. I'm going to start with verse 1. I'm going to jump around in this scripture, but in your later later. And your um, time, you can read through the scripture uh, through this chapter. Um, but let's start with um, let's start with uh, Second Kings chapter one verse. Ch excuse me, Second Kings chapter seven verse one. And I'm reading from the Amplified version. Then Elisha said, "Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord: Tomorrow about this time." A measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now, remember, I stated that when the word of God goes forth, it produces faith, and I can't, I will not be denied an attitude. So let's look at verse number three and four. Now, Elijah released the word of the Lord. That word was released in the atmosphere. It's something I want to share with you guys before I go another step forward. There's one particular point I've got to share with you guys before I go forward. When the word of God is spoken prophetically or preached, again, deliverance is available. Also, in the realm of the spirit, things go into motion to bring that word to pass, including moving people in the right position. I'm going to say that again, because from that point, you're going to see why these four men moved the way they did. I'm going to say that again. When the word of God is spoken prophetically, or preached, deliverance is available. In addition to that, in the realm of the spirit, things go into motion to bring that word to pass, including moving people in the right position. So now let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. Now, 
We remember Elijah spoke the word of the Lord. As I stated, when the word of the Lord is spoken, whether it's prophetically or it's preached, in the realm of the spirit, things are shifting. God is moving things. Angels are going and they're moving and putting things in place so that word can come to pass. Because the word of God, in the word of God, he says, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please and it will prosper where to the thing where I sent it. So in the realm of the spirit, God, the word is shifting and it's even, and we don't see this, but Holy Spirit revealed this to me. The, that word causes people's, cause, start to move on people's heart and they don't even know why they're doing that or why they even have this attitude all of a sudden or why all of a sudden they want to do this. Well, what's happening in the realm of the spirit, that prophetic word of the preached word of God has caused things to go into motion. And when it, things go into motion, people, God begins to shift people. He begins to deal with people's heart and people begin to move in different ways and they don't even know why they're doing it. It's the word of God that's causing them to move. Now, remember that. Keep that in the forefront of your mind. So now let's go. Now I'm trying to calm down. Uh, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. Now, check this out. Now, remember, the word of the Lord came forth. Now, look to check this out. Now, four men who were lepers were at the city, were at the entrance of the city of the city's gate. And they said one to another, why should we sit here until we die? If we say we will enter in the city, then the famine in the city, and we will die there. And if we sit still here, we will also die. So now, come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they let us live, we will live. And if they kill us, we will only die. Okay? Now, the word of the Lord was spoken. Now, as I stated before, when the Lord, when the word of the Lord is spoken in the realm of the spirit, angels, Holy Spirit begins to deal with people and people begin to move and don't even know why. Why after all this time, these lepers all, all of a sudden decide they want to get up and do something? That's because that word that was spoken starts to shift and move people. And it shift and move these lepers to do something that they normally would not do. But because the word of the Lord went forth, that word has to manifest. So God has them to start to deal with the heart of people and shift them so the word can come forth. All of a sudden, they, they, they want to get up and they want to move. And they, they want to say, man, look, man, we stay here, man. We're going to die. If we go in the city, we're going to die. Man, look, if we're going to die, let's die doing something. All out the blue. But it's not out the blue. It's because the word of the Lord went forth through God's prophet, through his servant, the prophet. And when that word was spoken, those that word, although it don't say in the word whether or not those lepers heard the word, but in the spirit realm, something was heard and something was shifted that caused those lepers to get up and move and go to the Syrians camp. I want y'all to think about that for a moment. Something was said, that word was so powerful that it caused these lepers to do something that they don't normally do. Remember I said, when the word is spoken, it ignites faith, faith, it produces courage and boldness, and I won't be denied attitude. That's what we see with these lepers. That word went forth, and it built up something in them, and it caused them, hey, we, 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 we need to do something. We, we just can't sit here and die. And if we're going to die, let's die 
doing something, not just sitting here. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, we're going to die because it's a famine. And what was going on during this time, it was a famine in the city. So they was like, man, come on, let's, let's, let's do something. But they didn't know it was because of the word of the Lord that came forth, that, that moved the, that came forth, that caused them to get up and move. All right, let's go to verse number seven. Let's go to verse number seven. Actually, let's start with verse number six. Because remember I stated that it causes us to walk in sweatless with very little effort victories. Remember, I also stated that when the word of God is spoken, whether prophetically or preached, things in the spirit realm starts to move and shift to cause that word to come to pass. This is why it's very important that when the word of God is being preached, it's not, hey, that's a good message. No, it's not a good message. It's God speaking to you. It's God sending deliverance to you. It's not just a good message. It's God speaking and sending deliverance to you, to me, to us. All right. So let's go. We're still in 2 Kings chapter 7. We're on verse 6. Now, I want to show you guys. Now, remember, I have stated that when the word is spoken, prophetically or preached, in the spirit realm, things starts to move to cause that word to come to pass. Check this out. Verse 6. For the Lord. Stop right there. For the Lord had caused the Syrian army to hear the sound of chariots and the sound of horses and the sound of a great army. They had said to one another, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come and fight against us. And the Assyrians set out and fled during the twilight and left their tents, their horses, donkeys, even left the camp just as it was and fled for their lives. So, <laughs> this is bad. This is, this is, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Elisha released that prophetic word. In the spirit realm, remember I said, in the spirit realm, what happens is, Holy Spirit and angels get the moving to, and shifting things and people to cause to make sure that word comes to pass. Because God's word ain't going to return to him void under no circumstances, period. It's going to come to pass. So what happened with these people, that word was released by Elisha. Then God, via Holy Spirit and the angels, caused the Assyrians, the Assyrians to hear our armies coming against them and when their army coming against them. Hold that. Don't you think about that. There was no armies coming against them. Why? What in the... And we see right here, it says, for the Lord had caused. Again, that's God doing... That's God causing things to happen in the spirit realm to make sure that his word don't return to him void. So he caused this, this, this Syrian army to hear a great army coming against them and when nobody know, nowhere near them. Those jokers got up, left everything in their camp and ran for their lives. Again, that word is, 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 is shifting things and people to make sure it comes to pass. All right. So what did these lepers, so remember I said, we're going to stay there. So remember I said that it, it causes us to walk in sweatless victories. Check out these lepers. Check this out. When these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried away from their from their 
silver, gold, and clothing. And they went and hid them. Then they went back and entered another tent and carried some valuable things from there also and went and hid them. Hmm. So you're you here to tell me that the word of the Lord went forth, caused the Syrian army to leave. First of all, number one, who in the world goes into a battle and bring silver and gold with them. That that's that that's that, that's number one. Why were you you about to go into a fight? What are you bringing silver and gold with you for? Is it possible that even before the Syrian army, I, I'm, I'm before even before the Syrian army was even ready to come against this city, come against Israel that God moved on them to pack their silver and gold with them and other valuable things. Come on, Holy, come on, Holy Spirit with wisdom. Come on, come on. Because God had a word for that city. There's something he wanted to do for that city. So even before the word went forth, God was even, my, he was even shifting them before the word even went forth. They already won the battle before, they, before it even got started. Who goes into a war with silver and gold and valuable stuff? Who does that? That had to have been God. They moved upon them to bring. It is no different than uh, Jehoshaphat. When those armies were coming against Jehoshaphat, and it said it, in the word, it said it took them three days to collect the spoils. Who brings valuables to a battle? God knows what he's doing. We have to trust him. It may not make sense, but he knows what he's doing. So when that word, when Elijah, Elisha, had released that word. What happened in the spirit realm, the angels start to play with those Syrians' ears because the word of the Lord had went forth that in this city about this time tomorrow that there's going to be so much abundance in this city. Now, in the midst of a famine, I got to remind you about that. It's still in the midst of a famine. A famine. There's going to be so much abundance in this city that stuff they usually sell high gonna sell real low because it's gonna be so much. So what happened was Elisha released that word. The Syrian army, the angels began to mess with the Syrian army ears. And they was like, man, wait a minute, these the king of Israel and messed around and, and hired about two sweet armies to come up against us. Oh no. Nah. And they got so scared they took off running. Now, and left everything, not everything, everything. I'm going to say it like that so it makes sure it hit home. They left everything. They didn't, they, they just, they just, they just, they just, boom, they gone. They were so scared, they took off running. And then the, the leopards walked into a victory. They were sitting at the gate starving. Because remember, there was a famine. So if there's a famine, even as lepers, they out the, at the city gate begging, there's nothing for nobody, no scraps for nobody to throw them. So they literally are starving. They're hungry. They're hungry. So they got up and went into the Syrian, the enemy's camp, and come to find out, them jokers ate and ate until they was full and they had some, they, oh man, oh man, this joker got a link change and everything. Or they got some Gucci slippers. Let me go ahead and grab that. Let me grab them Louis Vuitton. Oh yeah, let me grab that, them Alexander, um, you know, let me grab them Alexanders. Yeah, let me grab, let me grab them Jordans. They was in there just collecting all that stuff and they hiding it. Sweatless victories. When the word of God goes forth, it causes and we and we act, it causes us to walk in sweatless victories with very little effort, if any effort at all. 
And that's exactly what these lepers did. They walked right into a sweatless victory with very little effort. All from a, a prophetic word, the word of the Lord coming forth. Mm, mm, mm. I hope you guys are getting something from this. Because this is this, this is helping me. Last point. We're going to go to, uh, actually, it's going to be in verse 9. 9 and uh, 16. It produces the giving nature of God. And you want to tell everyone and share the good news with others. So let's go to verse 9. Okay. All right. So verse 9. Then they said one to another. We are not doing the right thing. Hmm. I wonder where that came from. We're not doing the right thing. This is a good, this is a day of good news. Mm. <laughs> Yet we are keeping silent. If we wait until the morning light, some punishment for not reporting this now will come on us. So now, Come, let us go and tell the king's household. Let's, let me read that again. Then they said one to another, we are not doing the right thing. Now look. Hmm. This is a day of good news. We are keeping silent. We can't, we, we, we can't keep, we need to go tell the gatekeepers what happened, what's, what, what, what's available to them. Because people in the city are dying. It's a famine in the city. We can't keep this to ourselves. So the, the lepers walked into deliverance. And the deliverance was so much that the, the giving nature of God came upon their hearts and like we can't keep this to ourselves we need to go tell the gatekeeper to let the king's household know that hey provisions that there's, there's provisions here there's there's abundance here that the city don't have to be in famine any longer when 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 the when when that happens it produces when we experience deliverance from the spoken, it produces the giving nature of God. And you can't contain it. You got to tell somebody. You, you, they, they, they're like, we, 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 can't, we, we, we can't hold this. Let's go look at verse 16. Verse 16 was, was a doozy for me. Verse six, let's go to verse 16. All right, so verse 16, it, verse uh, the, the fourth point. It produces the um, that when the spoken word, when deliverance is spoken, it produces deliverance to your household, community, city, state, and nation. Now, verse 16, check this out. Then the people of Israel went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So goods were so plentiful that a measure a fine meal flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in accordance with the word of the Lord spoken through Elisha. Again, the deliverance brought the, 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 that spoken word brought not only deliverance to the lepers, but it bought, brought deliverance to the entire city that was dying of a famine. When the word of God is spoken again prophetically, it is our we are supposed to receive that word. Take that word. Take, that's, that's mine. I got, that's, that belongs to me. Because again, when the word is spoken, whether it's prophetically or taught, deliverance is available. It's right there. However, 
a lot of times we miss it because we're, we have to be in tune with the spirit. It's, it's, it's not just a good message. That's not just a good word. That was deliverance being spoken. That was healing being spoken. That was breakthrough being spoken. That was financial freedom being spoken. That was debt cancellation being spoken. And we're supposed to grab that word, take that word, because again, remember, God's word will not return to him void. And when we got in and remember, in the spirit realm, things in the spirit realm has already shifted. A lot of times when things manifest in our life, I would dare to say all the times when things manifest in our life, good things, I ain't talking about bad things. It's because in the spirit realm, it's already been, it was already always there in the spirit realm. We just so happen at the right moment connected to it and walked into it. Same thing that they did. Now I was looking at this scripture, this passage of scripture, because I want to go back and I want to, I want to, I want to share something with you guys. And this is very, 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 very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Let's go back to verse one. And I don't mean to jump around you guys, but it, it was so much in this scripture, in, in these, in this passage of scripture. It, it was, it was, it's so meaty. So check this out. Now, then Elisha heard the word of the Lord. And he said, thus said the word of the Lord tomorrow about this time a measure of finely milled flour for sale for a shackle and two measures of barley for a shackle at the gate of Samaria. Now look at verse two. Then the royal officer on whose arm the king leaned answered the man of God and said, if the Lord should make windows in heaven for the rain, could this thing take place? Elisha said, Behold, you will see it with your own eyes, but because you doubt, you will not eat of it. Why is it? So, question. There's a question I was looking at this, and I was wondering, okay, why in the world did God move on the lepers? Why did he move on nobody in the city? Why didn't nobody in the city, why would nobody in the city urge to move but besides these lepers? This is what Holy Spirit told me. Because of the doubt of the royal officer, which influenced the king, God moved on the hearts of the lepers because God's word would not return to him void. The doubt of the royal officer influenced the king. So much that the king didn't pronounce the word of the Lord to the city. Mm, my God. So because God's word would not return to him void, he had to move on somebody. There was too, my God, hold on. There was too much fear and disparity and doubt in the city. So he moved on the lepers. And this is why we have to be careful who is in our circle. This royal officer influenced the king. What the king should have done is taken the word of the Lord from the prophet, declared it to the city, faithful to rose in the city, and then boom. But he didn't do that. The royal officer influenced the king. The king kept his mouth closed. So God, like, look, I got some, some, I got, a, I got somebody in here because my word is not going to return boy. That's not going to happen. So let me move on to four lepers. Boom. He got on those four lepers. Four lepers got the moving to such a point where the four lepers came. And went back to the and found what and discovered that the Syrian army left everything. Came back, told the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper went 
And I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing this. The gatekeeper went and told the king. The king was like, uh, I don't know. I think the Syrians did that to kind of set us up. So one of the officers said, hey, let's send just five of our soldiers to go and check it out. Let's not send everybody. And if, if, if it is, you know, if they did set us up, you know what I'm saying, then everybody won't get killed. It'll just be a few, just, just five of them. So just, just send five. Go to sent the five, come to find out what the leper was saying was true. Then the whole city went and plundered everything that was there. But really, God's perfect will was for, my God, was for the king to receive the prophetic word from the prophet. Declare that prophetic word to the city. Because remember, Whenever two or three touch a degree concerning anything, it shall be established. So, my God, hold on, wait a minute. You have four leopards. He said two or three. We got four touching a degree to move and go to the Syrian, the Syrian camp. My God, that's good, Holy Ghost. But because of the doubt that the royal officer influenced the king, the king kept his mouth closed. So, God like, hey, uh-uh, my, my, my word, that's, that's not going to happen on my watch. My word, going, my word is going to do what it's supposed to do. It is going to prosper in the thing where I sent it. So now, nah, let, me, let me, me touch the heart of these leopards and then have them go and do what actually the king was supposed to do. But because he had the wrong person in his circle, in his ear, speaking doubt in his ear. He didn't release the word of the Lord to the city. If I remember correctly, with Jehoshaphat, the prophetic word went forth with, uh, with Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat declared the prophetic word to the entire city. Send the praises first. Then victory came forth. That's how it's supposed to be. Every king needs a prophet speaking in his life. Mm. A king needs a prophet of God speaking in his life, telling him the word of the Lord so he can declare the word of the Lord over the nation. Every king had, David had a prophet. Samuel had a prophet. All of them had it was said, Saul had a pro all of them had a prophet that would speak the word of the Lord to them, and they declared the word over the city. This man of God, this king, refused simply because his royal officer filled him with doubt, so he kept his mouth closed. That's why God moved on the lepers, because he could not move on nobody in the city. It was too much doubt. Doubt will hinder and short circuit the prophetic and spoken word of God. Doubt, unbelief, disbelief, whatever, however you want to coin it, it will short circuit the, the power of the word of God. So God like, man, look, I'm, I'm a, I, some, it's my word, my prophet has spoke my word. Believe the Lord thy God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. God doesn't do anything first until he reveal his secrets to his servant, the prophets. The prophets, the prophetic, the prophets are coming back. And they are coming back stronger. And they are coming back declaring the word of the Lord. They're declaring, they're going to declare it to the nations, to the kings, the presidents of nations. And it's going to be real prophets saying what thus saith the Lord. And they're not going to be bribed by anybody. They're going to say what God says. And the kings are going to receive the word of the prophet. And, and deliverance is going to come to nations. And nations are going to repent and come back to God. Because the prophets are coming back. And they're coming back real. They're coming back strong. Hallelujah. 
The prophets are coming back. In the name of Jesus, I feel God on that. They're coming back. It's time for the prophets, the real prophets, not prophets who want to who wanna showboat, prophets who really got a word from the Lord to speak and say what God is saying to the kings and the kings will utter it to the cities and it will bring revival and repentance to the cities. This is what prophets do. This is what our prophet does. He speaks the word of God. He declares it. We receive it and we get manifestation. Every king got to have a prophet in his ear that hears from God and will tell him what God is saying. And everything a prophet said ain't goody, goody, good and tickling your fancy either. Hallelujah. This is the time we are living in. Prophets are rising up now. Prophets are, God is pulling the prophets up. The prophetic has been, has been abused and mistreated and, and made a mockery of. God is, re, is revising it and turning it and shifting it. And the real prophets are coming up to declare, thus saith the Lord. And God is backing up like he always has. He always back up his prophets. He and, and not one time a prophet has said something that came up that God told him to say and God did not back him up. Hallelujah. That is the time we're living in right now. Real prophets speaking the word. Hallelujah. It's time, it's time. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will come with the word of the Lord. It will be fire on their tongues. I will put coals in the, on the mouths of my prophets. And when they open their mouths and speak, my holy fire will go forth and consume and burn up everything. I'm not just coming with nice words. I'm coming to bring deliverance. I'm coming to warn. I'm coming to steer the people back to me, saith the Lord. I have a remnant that's just waiting and they will come forth and you will let, where did this person come from? Who is this person? I have ordained them. I have called them. They got my word in their mouth and when they open their mouth and speak my word, I will back it up 100%. Angels will wait, are waiting for them to release and go forth and say what I say. Thank you, God. Ha, it's time. It's time. Hey, hey, this is not a time to be playing games. True and real prophets are coming forth. And they're speaking what thus saith the Lord. Hey, 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 as they used to say back in the day, they ain't taking no wooden nickels. They saying what God saying, and they not move whether or not people are like it. They saying what God is saying, and God is will back them up one hundred percent. Hey, Taba, say Koreana, my mama. Hey, shot they go so Koreana, my mama. Rekete be koso. 
I am even turning the ears of kings to prophets. Yeah, be both. Their ears will be in tune to hear the word of the prophet. Mama, Reko Shanda. King's ears are waiting to hear the instructions of the prophet. Mama, Roko Sahero Shiana, Mama. Men and women who won't compromise my word. Men and women who are, are what they say behind closed doors as well on the camera. Men and women who I have ordained. Men and women who I have called and put my word in the their mouth and they will say nothing else outside of what I say. Yet they will shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory. Woo! We give you glory. Father, we give you glory. Lift your wherever you are, lift your hands right now. Father, we give you glory. We thank you. We thank you. God, we thank you right now. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yeah, there's a re, there's a, a, a re, a, 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 there's a recalibration going on in the spirit. I'm recalibrating my prophets. I'm recalibrating them. I'm recalibrating. Thank you, Jesus. My God, we give you glory. My God, we give you glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Did I not say that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh? And your daughters and your son will prophesy. He will both shout. He said, I will both. He can never go to see a mama. He said, I have a son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah. And the word will be undeniable. Ma, ha, they go. He it will be undeniable. They're not going to be able to deny it. Mama, ma, see a mama. He said, they're not going to be able to deny it. They will see a mama. They're not going to be able to deny it. May they go see a mama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. My God. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is why. This is why it is imperative that we shift our mindset. There is an imperative that whenever we sit up under the word of God, whenever we sit up under Apostle Arike, whenever we sit up, he's a prophet of God. He's releasing what God is saying. It's not just words. It's not just a good message. God is speaking through him to us. It will behoove us to hear what the word of the Lord is being released out of the mouth of God's prophet, his servant, the prophet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness. My son was prophesied. He was prophesied by God's, his servant, the prophet. And today, Jared is so. The word of God did not return void. So whenever we are sitting and we are listening and we are ready to eat of the word of God, know this, my brothers and my sisters, it is God speaking. He is speaking to us. We have to take it seriously. And when we execute and receive and move on what the word of God is saying, what God is saying through his servant, the prophet, he backs him up. Hallelujah. It will come to pass. Praise God. Father, we thank you. I gave your people your word. And I thank you, Father, for wisdom and insight that went forth like never before. Glory to your name, Father. Father, I pray that this word, and I declare and decree that this word was sold on good ground. And it will bring forth 100-fold return. 
Thank you guys for joining me this at this evening. I sure appreciate it. I hope something was said that will bring transformation and deliverance to your life. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother Gerald Purdue. I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all are my family. I love y'all. And I will holler at y'all on Sunday. Y'all have a wonderful the rest of y'all week. I'm out.